Contrary to popular belief, all NBA trades aren't one-sided. Granted, it doesn't happen very often, but sometimes all parties in a trade emerge as winners thanks to expert negotiations by NBA general managers. Let's take a look at the best win-win trades in NBA history. Paul George for Victor Oladipo and DeMontis Sabonis when Paul George demanded a trade from the Indiana Pacers in 2017, no one, absolutely no one thought he'd wind up in Oklahoma City. Most experts around the league penciled in George for one of the two LA teams, seeing how the Palme California native hadn't exactly hit his desire to eventually play for the Lakers or Clippers. But Thunder GM Sam Presti came in at the 12th hour and gave the Pacers an offer they couldn't resist. The Thunder got George and paired the all-star wing with the MVP point guard Russell Westbrook. The Pacers got back two blue chip prospects of the their own in Victor Oladipo and DeMontis Sabonis. Oladipo wasn't a great backcourt partner for Westbrook, but he blew up big time once he got to Indiana where he played his college basketball and averaged 23 points per game in 2018 and has made the all-star team each of the last two seasons. Sabonis spread his wings too and averaged 18.5 points per game this year. George went on to play two seasons for the Thunder and made the all-star team in both years, but OKC lost in the first round of the playoffs in 2019 and George asked for a trade. Like many experts, speculated when he demanded a trade from Indiana in 2017, George wanted to come home, and he got his wish when the Thunder traded him to the Clippers. Pau Gasol from Mark Gasol Back in 2008, it looked like the Grizzlies had traded the best player in franchise history for a pile of actual garbage. Memphis dealt Pau Gasol, a 20-point-per-game scorer who made the All-Star team in 2006, for Kwame Brown, Javaris Crittenton, Aaron McKee, and the 48th pick in the 2007 draft, Mark Gasol, Pau's brother. While Brown, Crittenton, and McKee didn't amount to anything in Memphis and were out of the league a short while after the deal, Mark Gasol, who was merely a throw-in to the trade made the Grizzlies look like geniuses. Powell went on to help the Lakers win back-to-back -back championships in 2009 and 2010, while his younger brother became the Grizzlies' starting center in 2009 and nearly averaged a double-double one season later. Mark would man the middle for Memphis over the next decade. He was selected to three All-Star teams and helped lead the Grizzlies to seven straight playoff appearances during the grit and grind era. Memphis even made the Western Conference Finals in 2013 when Gasol pocketed the league's Defensive Player of the Year award. Luka Doncic for Trey Young the Atlanta Hawks entered the 2018 draft in a perfect situation at pick number three. They needed a point guard and knew that the top two teams in the draft, the Suns and Kings, weren't going to take any of the top two point guards available in Luka Doncic and Trey Young. But the Hawks also knew the Mavs wanted Doncic bad, so they negotiated a deal with Dallas where they swapped first round picks with the Mavericks and also picked up an extra 2019 first round selection in the process. The Hawks got their guy in Young, who averaged 19 points per game as a rookie and made the All-Star game in just his second season. The Hawks also used their future Mavs pick to select Cam Reddish, who could be a future impact player. The Mavs got their guy too in Doncic at pick number five. Doncic went on to win Rookie of the Year over Young and also made his first All-Star team in his second season while averaging 29 points, nine rebounds, and nine assists per game. Numbers which put him in the MVP conversation earlier this year. Glenn Rice for Alonzo Mourning. The Charlotte Hornets never should have traded Hall of Famer Alonzo Mourning, but their hand was forced in 1995 when Mourning's feud with teammate Larry Johnson led to the Hornets breaking up a perennial playoff team. Miami got Mourning, who had already been an All-Star twice with Charlotte, along with Pete Myers and LeRon Ellis by giving up Glenn Rice along with Matt Geiger, Khalid Reeves, and a 1996 first-round pick. Rice had spent his first six seasons with the Heat and was just beginning to develop into an All-Star after averaging 22 points per game, but Miami hadn't had too much success with him leading the way. Mourning went on to make five All-Star teams with the Heat and won Defensive Player of the Year twice as Miami made the playoffs six straight times. Mourning went on to become one of the most beloved players in franchise history. Rice played three seasons with Charlotte and made the All-Star team in all three years. He averaged a career-high 27 points per game and made a league-best 47% of his three-pointers in 1997. Anthony Davis for the future New Orleans was backed into a corner when Anthony Davis requested a trade in 2019, and Davis even gave New Orleans a list of teams that he wanted to get dealt to, the Lakers, Knicks, Bucks, and Clippers. But everyone around the league knew he had his sights set on the yellow and purple. The Pelicans pulled the trigger in the summer of 2019 when they sent Davis to the Lakers in exchange for Lonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram, Josh Hart, and three future first round picks. The Lakers, of course, came out of this trade winners, as Davis and LeBron James have proven to be a seamless on-court fit. But New 
Orleans is sitting pretty after this trade too. After winning the draft lottery with their own first round selection and drafting Zion Williamson, the Pelicans picked up promising big man Jackson Hayes with the Lakers first round pick. And after not fitting in with LeBron in LA, both Lonzo Ball and Brandon Ingram look to be long term pieces in New Orleans. Ingram made his first all star game this season and is averaging 24 points per game, while Ball is averaging 12.5 points, 6 rebounds, and 7 assists per game and could be the Pelicans point guard of the future. Will Purdue for Dennis Rodman the Bulls managed to swap their backup center in Will Purdue for maybe the best rebounder in NBA history in Dennis Rodman, only because Rodman flat out tanked his own trade value himself. After the Spurs got Rodman in a trade with the Pistons, his behavior became beyond erratic. Rodman skipped Spurs training camp in 2002, threw a bag of ice at coach Bob Hill after being ejected during an exhibition game a year later, and San Antonio even had to suspend Rodman from game four of the 1995 playoffs after he refused to enter game Game three. The Spurs had to get rid of Robin, but he was so toxic at the time that not many teams wanted to take on the risk. The Bulls did, and the rest is history. Rodman led the league in rebounding during his first three seasons with the Bulls, and along with Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen, helped Chicago to three straight championships from 1996 to 1998. Purdue went on to play the next four seasons in San Antonio and gave the Spurs valuable and consistent minutes at the center position. Shaquille O'Neal for Lamar Odom and Karan Butler. Shaquille O'Neal had just led the Lakers to three rings in 2000, 2001, and 2002, but Los Angeles lost in the conference finals in 2003 and then were embarrassed in the finals against the Pistons in five games in 2004. His time was up in LA and the Lakers dealt him to the heat for Lamar Odom, Karan Butler, Brian Grant, and a future first round pick. The trade initially looked like a disaster for the Lakers. O'Neal played a key role in helping lead the heat to a championship in 2006, while the Lakers hovered around 500. Things in LA got so bad that Kobe demanded a trade, but Odom proved to be the perfect role player and a valuable piece in the Lakers' two championship winning squads in 2009 and 2010 when he nearly averaged a double-double in both seasons, primarily off the bench. He also won sixth man of the year in 2011. Butler and Grant never provided much for LA, but the Lakers turned their future first round pick from the deal into Jordan Farmer, who proved more than capable of being the backup point guard on back-to-back -back title winning teams, which is no easy feat. Kevin Love for Andrew Wiggins when LeBron James declared that he was returning to Cleveland in 2014 after a four-year run in Miami, the Cavs instantly became a win-now team. LeBron wanted to play with as many veterans as possible, so the Cavs swapped Andrew Wiggins, who Cleveland had taken number one overall in the draft just that summer, along with 2014 number one overall pick Anthony Bennett for love. The Timberwolves also received Thaddeus Young as part of a three-way deal that involved the 76ers. Love, who was already a three-time All-Star with the Timberwolves, along with LeBron and Kyrie Irving, Irving helped the Cavs to four straight NBA Finals with Cleveland winning the championship in 2016 over the 73-win Golden State Warriors. Love will probably go down as an underrated contributor on those Cavs teams, but was a skilled scorer and averaged 19 points per game for Cleveland in 2016. He also made two All-Star teams with the Cavs in 2017 and 2018 and is still one of the best rebounders in the league today. Wiggins blossomed into a 20-plus per game scorer with the Timberwolves who reoriented their team around the skilled wing. His best season with Minnesota came in 2017 when he averaged 24 points per game. Charles Oakley for Bill Cartwright for as good as Michael Jordan was early in his career, he still couldn't quite break through and take the Bulls to the finals by himself in the late 80s. After falling to the bad boy Pistons in 1988, the Bulls traded Charles Oakley to the Knicks for Bill Cartwright. The two teams also swapped future first round picks along with Will Perdue, who was a key role player for a number of years in Chicago, and Rod Strickland, who made the all-rookie second team for New York in 1989. The trade was controversial at the time. Oakley was an excellent defender. He was also Jordan's best friend on the team and protector who was willing to fight Jordan's fights for him. But Chicago felt like they needed a bigger presence at center to battle the rival big men that stood in the Bulls' way. During his first season in Chicago, Cartwright proved his worth with a strong performance against Patrick Ewing in the 1989 Eastern Conference semifinals, which the Bulls won in six games. When Chicago finally won a championship in 1991, Cartwright was a key piece, averaging 29 minutes, 10 points, and six rebounds. Oakley proved to be a great addition for the Knicks too and spent the next decade in New York. He was named to the All-Star team in 1994 and the All-Defensive First team in the same season. Kevin Johnson for Larry Nance in 1987, the Suns were a mess. 
finishing 28 and 54 and disgraced by a drug scandal which implicated franchise career leading scorer Walter Davis. But the Suns were able to parlay their most marketable asset at the time in Larry Nance, who won the slam dunk contest in 1984 and was coming off a career year in 1987 when he averaged 22.5 points and 9 rebounds per game, along with journeyman Mike Sanders and the number 22 pick that year, Randolph Keyes, into a trade with the Cleveland Cavaliers for Kevin Johnson, Mark West, Tyrone Corbin, a 1988 first round pick, and two second rounders. Nance made two all-star teams with Cleveland and averaged 19 points and 9 rebounds per game for the Cavs in 1991. Johnson was selected to three All-Star games in Phoenix, won the NBA's Most Improved Player Award in 1989, and was a 20-plus point-per-game scorer for the Suns in his prime. Phoenix also used the draft picks it got in the trade to select Dan Marley, who teamed with Johnson and Charles Barkley to lead the Suns to seven straight playoff appearances while all three were with the team.